Hello and welcome to this week's fretboard session. Today we're going to talk about how you can start making music in the Mixolydian mode. We're going to talk really briefly about what the mode is and we're also going to jump into how you can write chord progressions and melodies in that mode. So the Mixolydian mode on the guitar is a very popular mode and I think it's one of my favourites to play over and you'll see just how, from how it sounds what kinds of music that we end up playing this on. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at what the Mixolydian mode is. So today we're going to be playing in B Mixolydian. Now B Mixolydian is actually the same chords and the same key as E major. What does that mean? Well, all the same notes that are in the E major scale, so E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E, are the same as B Mixolydian. And that's true of any major scale, is that the Mixolydian mode is built around chord and note number five being home instead of chord number one. How does that work? Well, imagine the solar system. And in the solar system, we all currently have all these planets that revolve around the sun. But instead of us revolving around the sun, imagine suddenly everything shifted. Same set of planets, suddenly everything was going to revolve around Mars. It would be a completely different feel, even though it's the same set of planets and it's the same solar system. Well, this is the same thing. So we have the same set of notes, but if we make another chord feel like home, the whole feeling of the scale changes. So let's hear what E major sounds like. So for us to be in B Mixolydian and definitely not in E major, even though they have the same chords, we need to make sure that we hear this chord as home. And right now, because I just played an E major, that's probably not happening for you yet, but we're going to get there, don't worry. So this chord is going to become our home. So we're going to make B major our home in the key of E major. Let's look at all the chords in E major, and then let's stack them up against what we need the chords to be in B Mixolydian, and which what numbers they come at. So let's look at the chords in E major, and let's stack them up against the chords in B Mixolydian and see what they look like. In E major, we've got E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A major, B major, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished, and E. And that's true of any major scale. It's major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and then a major at the top of it. If you don't know that, you should be practicing it because it's one of the real pillars to uh, everything you're ever gonna do in music. Now in B mix Lydian, it's all the same chords, but now we start from B as the one. So B major is now our one chord. C sharp minor is now our two chord. D sharp diminished is actually our three chord now. E major is now our four chord. F sharp minor is now our five chord. G sharp minor is now our six chord. And A is our seven chord. So that's how the two of them look side by side. Now making that B major feel like home. So how, just using the information we've got so far, how can we make B major feel like home and not E major, even though we've got the same set of chords? Well, the easiest way to start with is to avoid the E major chord. Doesn't mean we have to avoid it forever, but a nice way to think about this, if we avoid that E major chord and we play lots of the B major, we put it in important places like chord one or chord four, then probably, then probably it's going to sound like B major is home. Okay, so I'm going to choose to play B, then I'm going to play A, which is our chord seven, and I'm going to throw in a little bit of chord two in our B mixolydian, which is our C sharp minor. So I'm, I'm just going to improvise around those three chords and see if I can make the B feel like home. So...
right, cool. So I think that sounds like that's home. Now just to check, if I play the E major, does that suddenly sound like home? No, that sounds like a chord which I don't identify with at this point, or it sounds like a different section maybe, but it definitely doesn't sound like home over these two chords. So we fulfilled the idea of getting B major to sound like it's the home chord, even though we're using the chords of E major. Now, a question that comes up at this point often is, well, okay, we've made B major sound like home. Well, aren't we just in B major then as a scale? Well, let's take a look at that. So let's see how we can make sure that we're not in B major, because there is, there is a possibility we could actually end up in B major if we just do that one thing. So let's look at the, the notes in B major. So in B major, we've got B, C sharp, so they're the same, D sharp, that's the same, E, F sharp, G sharp, now we have an A sharp and B. So we've got one different note in there, that A sharp. Now the difference of having an A sharp in B major versus B mixolydian seems like a small detail, but it, it's a really big one because when you extrapolate that out and you've got the chords that we're playing over, that's gonna affect three triads. So any of the triads that have the chord, and it's gonna affect four seventh chords. So let's put the chords up from B major. So the chords in B major versus B mixolydian, B major, you start with a B major chord. No surprises there. Then next you have a C sharp minor chord, which is just like uh, our B mixolydian. So there's no changes there so far. Then we have a D sharp minor chord, which is different. Then we have E major, which is the same. Then we have F sharp major, which is different. Then we have G sharp minor, which is the same. Then we have A sharp diminished, which is different. And then we have B again. So possible ways that we can use this information is to make sure we hit chords which are different to that B major. So for instance, when I did the chord progression before, I showed B to A. Trying to emphasize the B, but that B to the A. Now the A really shows that we're in mixolydian because in B major, that would be an A sharp diminished if we were gonna do that one to seven movement. which you would never do because that sounds horrible. But moving B to A, you can really hear that that's a mixolydian sound. Now, there is a way that we can actually produce a mixolydian sound by even just staying on chord one, but it's not enough to stay in the triad. So this is where adding on sevenths becomes a bit more interesting. So when we're working with seventh chords, chord one of our B major scale, we use notes one, three, five, and seven, which is where the A sharp comes in, which means chord one of B major is a B major seven. But when we look at the mixolydian mode, chord one of the mixolydian mode, if we go one, three, five, seven, we've got an A there as our seventh note. So that means that chord one of the mixed Lydian mode is actually a dominant seven chord. So this is where you end up with blues or a lot of bluesy style stuff where you've got that mixed Lydian as note one. All you need to hear is the one chord in mixed Lydian. You can tell you're in mixed Lydian. So let's try that. So major blues often is in mixolydian as a mode when you're playing it because you can really feel that one chord is definitely not, I mean, there, you don't hear this. And if I never play the E, you don't go, uh, where's the root? The root's there, bum, 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 bum. Okay. Cool, so that's how we look at things in a chordal way. And so trying to get your chords to actually sound like a mode, I think is more important than trying to get the melodies 
as a baseline fundamental because the chords dictate most of the time what's happening in the melody. So you can think you're playing in the mixolydian mode, but until you can write a chord progression and really tell me what's happening in those chords or our modes, you're going to struggle to really create the sound of a mode, whether it's with a melody or not. But you can also make modal sounds in melody. It's just hard if you don't have control over those chords to really bring out the, the flavor of a mode. Okay, so let's look at how do we do this in melody form. Well, in melody form, the way that we sound like we're in a mode is to produce a melody which sounds like it's over that, that chord or brings out the special note from the mode as compared to what we'd normally be expecting to hear. So when we're playing in the mixolydian mode, We want to make it sound like B is our home and we want to produce a melody that shows that we're not in B major. So we want to put in our special notes. So the difference between the major scale and the mixolydian is the seventh. So one way of thinking about the mixolydian mode is that it's a major scale with a flat seven. And that's particularly useful when you're writing melodies. Now we want to bring out that note in order to sound like we're in that mixolydian mode. So I'm going to pick an area of my fretboard and I'm going to pick here. I'm going to make sure I can play a one octave range in that area of the mixolydian mode. Now a good way to bring out that melody is we want to make sure that we have our root in there somehow in that melody so we can identify or something around the root three and five that tells us that we're in that chord as a melody. And we want to get in that seven somewhere so that it sounds nice. So it's useful to know the arpeggio of that chord. But you don't just want to play it straight up and down because that often doesn't sound like a melody. So what I could do is take the B or the root and that seven. So I'll make that form the first interval of my melody. So what I've done there is I've gone one, seven, seven, six, five, four, five, five. So my real pillars of the melody are notes which outline that mode. So one, seven, seven, that's outlining the mode because that's the root and our special note. And then I've done pass through six, I've kind of passed through five, paused at the four a little bit, and then ended up on the five. So I finished on that five, which is a pillar note. So. That really sounds like. So when I'm doing this, and remember this is a practice technique. This isn't an end goal of your playing right now. This is a tool that you're gonna to use to get better. And the goal here, as with the chords, is for you to be able to hear that, that that sounds like it's in a mode. And so you're trying to set up those pillars for yourself and go as slow as you like in order to be able to hear the difference. Now, if you can't hear the difference between a mode and what the original would be, you can try playing the same scale back to back. So if I play... And I should know, hopefully, and if you haven't done this before, watch some of my other videos on how to build scales in different areas, that this goes one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, root. And if I want to hear the major scale back to back with it, I want to make sure I can play that A as an A sharp. So I hope you found this useful and there's a lot to do with modes. So take it one little bite at a time and just take from this video what you can get out of it. Because 
one thing to remember about modes is people go to university to study them. And so the more that you're exposed to this kind of material, the better you're going to get at using modes and understanding modes where your level is at. Now, if you found that some of the stuff today flew over your head, don't worry about it because the more that you watch and are exposed to this material, the more clear your thinking is going to become. And there's lots of pieces to this as well. If you got a lot of value out today, I'd love you to hit a like and a subscribe. I'm trying to hit 1500 subscribers on YouTube at the moment. And I really appreciate any help that you can give me. I will see you guys soon. I do sessions every Thursday and Saturday on YouTube and uh, see you guys soon. Bye.